All right, so welcome everybody and thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this webinar. It's going to be a great webinar. We have some awesome information to present to you. And I got to acknowledge good news when it's here, right? So COVID numbers are down, vaccinations are up, the snow is melting, we've had warm weather, the economy's up, the stock market's up, and it's March and we're in basement waterproofing. How much fun is that? How long have you waited to get to this month, right? So we're really in a great position to have a great year for the, the waterproofing contractors. All right, so in that light, let me unpack this really cool lead source that I think gets often overlooked. What we're gonna cover today is factors that drive up ranking in the local pack. And also I wanna give you um, just kind of the big picture trends that Google is, is doing, like kind of a backup and look at over the past eight years, like what's happening, what's going on, what, what's Google doing and maybe even why. I wanna give you a little tool that will allow you to spy on your competitors to see what categories they have going on in their Google My Business listing. I'm gonna talk about four really important items that relate to ranking higher and local. And then I also wanna give you kind of like a higher level insider's tip on how to make those customer reviews even more impactful for your listing. And there's a lot of little things that I'll cover as well. So let's jump in. Why is local SEO so darn important? Here we go. One, like all clicks are free, right? Like I feel sometimes owners uh, are more comfortable with like, I'd rather like give money to something and see the direct impact and the direct return. And when you're talking about advertising, people aren't used to just getting kind of free, um, you know, free clicks, free web traffic. Granted, you know, Many of you are paying an agency to kind of help optimize this stuff. And, you know, you, you got to acknowledge that. But it's not like a, you know, I'm, I'm spending this on the mailer and I got these many leads and, and calls from the mailer. So this is kind of free stuff that's coming in. You know, second, Google Ads are super expensive. We all know that. If you're running Google Ads, which I know a lot of you are on this webinar, you know, you're kind of tired of seeing those $500 charges on your credit card. And... Our customers are spending, you know, on average, well over probably five thousand a month. Um, if you look at it in twelve month periods, so it's a lot of money being thrown around to to Google Ads. And then, if you look at the research, people tend to trust SEO more than they trust ads. Now, it's kind of common sense, um, but SEO is a little bit more trusted than ads. And lastly, and then this is really what I'm excited about showing you is our data. I want to show you some examples, just three examples of what we see in Google Analytics. And I don't know, I think you're going to be really surprised. Um, so I'm excited about getting into that. Before we do, though, you know, our brains are designed for distraction. Um, so this is a worthy investment. If you could just kind of shut your phones off and Facebook, and I know you're serious about growing your company and this, this lead source, local SEO, like any waterproofer throughout the country that I've, I've met over the last like two, three years, every one of them would say, oh, our number one lead source is internet, right? And so I really want to uh, focus in on this and I, I just want to support you on like understanding this and really getting it. So real quick background about me, in case you don't know me, I, I own and run this company, Rainmaker Contractors, been doing this for 12, 13 years. We are an award-winning uh, Google partner, which puts us in the top 4%. Google's flown me out to their headquarters a few times, which I greatly accepted. Um, got to eat in their fun cafeteria and everything. That was fun. Uh, I'm a little bit different in that I've owned a basement waterproofing company for 15 years. I spend my own money figuring this stuff out. It's different than like experimenting with somebody else's and trying to get into the market. Uh, but most importantly, what I do and what our team does is we generate massive amounts of leads for basement waterproofing and lead and uh, foundation repair companies. It's what we do. It's our thing. And we think we're good at it. And uh, I'm just going to give you some free insider information today, whether you're a client of ours or not. Here's what I want to start out with. Um, in total transparency, I looked at three different Google Analytics. No more. That's all I did, excuse me. Um, and I took the first three that I saw. These are clients, 
and I did this two days ago, and I did a 30-day um, search, 30-day uh, span, and these are the sources of traffic. Now, granted, probably two to three weeks of the last 30 days were, you know, a foot or two of snow on the ground and super cold, right? So what I really want to highlight here is the amount of organic search that is coming to your websites. Now, this is all free traffic in contrast to the paid search and direct search, which, you know, that's probably your other advertising and the social traffic. So in this particular situation, I, I have example number one, we have 610 web visits coming off from organic search. I'm going to explain what organic, organic search is very specifically, but if you compare that to paid search, it's killing it. And all these are free. And then if you look at the average time on site, they're spending way more time coming through organic. Um, let me show you another example. Here's one, 479 uh, web visits coming in through organic versus paid. Now, I got to tell you, almost all of our clients say, don't put a cap on our Google ads. We'll take as many leads as we can get. So these are most likely uncapped um, Google ads budget, but still organic search is just killing them. And also average time on site. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share one more thing, but let me say this. Um, having been a contractor, I'm fully aware that what a contractor wants is leads. And part of my spiel, I always say like, hey, you know, you don't care about web visits uh, or time on site. Those things don't matter. This is displayed really nice. This is right out of Google Analytics. And I could tell you that this, these numbers here are in proportion to the number of calls that come in because we set up call tracking on all of our, all of our clients. Um, so these are not phone calls, these are web visits. Web visits not a phone call, right? So then, you know, when you look at your call tracking inside the dashboard we provide, not all calls are leads. Just, I, we never claim that. So some of them are service calls, some of them are callbacks. So you have to actually hit play and then you find out if it's a lead or not. But it's pretty proportionate. So, you know, if they're coming in from organic versus paid search display and so on. There's this massive amounts of web visits and calls and leads coming from organic search. I'm going to show you one more before we move on. This one is beautiful because organic search is like you combine everything else and I think you still have more in organic search. And there's still time on your site, you know, higher than everything. So my point here is there's so much web traffic coming in through organic search that I want to support you to be able to pay attention to it and influence it because it matters. All right, so what areas of search is really organic? Like we really need to dial in, like what are you talking about when all this organic traffic is coming in? What does Google count? That, those were Google analytic reports. So what is Google saying is specifically organic search? There's three areas. So the first one is under the map section. We're gonna call that the local pack. I put a number one there just to make it easy to remember. So that's, if, if a web visit is coming from this area, that's, that's uh, organic search. That's a credit from that. So then you hit view more. They sometimes change the word up, doesn't matter, but everyone's gone to the map section. You hit view more, and then you get this local finder area with all the red dots and all your competitions list, listed on the left there. So if they're coming from this section of organic, that also is considered um, organic search. And again, these are free, right? All right, so then the third and last section that Google counts as organic search is towards the bottom of the page where you have ads on the top, you have your map section, what we're calling the local finder, or sorry, local pack, and then you have the local organic on the very bottom. So any web visitors coming to your website that's all considered organic search and that's all free traffic in contrast to, for example, Google Ads, which is on the top. All right, so that's pretty enlightening in my opinion. Now, conclusion, massive web traffic and phone calls are coming all from local SEO and it's all free. Is that a beautiful thing? So if you wanna grow your company, you wanna get more leads, it's, it's an area that you've gotta pay attention to. 
All right. When I owned a basement waterproofing company, sales reps always went to homes after they did their inspection and they there was an area where you're educating the homeowner. We always had third party articles. What's a third party article example? That's an article from the Center of Disease Control, American Lung Association, Mayo Clinic, whatever. And we use these to educate people on the consequences of moisture. So the purpose of a third party article is to have a mutual point of trust, someone that uh, in this specific case, a homeowner can then trust this third party versus trusting the sales reps to tell them what's wrong with the basement and what the consequences of moisture are, right? All right, so in this case, I'm using the most trusted third party article in the internet marketing business. If it's not number one, it's gotta be number two, but it's really high up there. There has been a survey on a pretty regular basis of the top local SEO experts in the industry um, for the last several years. Now, it hasn't been as consistent recently when a, a new gentleman took it over, but this used to happen every year. Nevertheless, it's still very, very, very highly credential, uh, credible and very, very insightful. And I'm going to kind of uh, try to avoid the nerdy talk and kind of give you the high impact areas that I think are going to be helpful. Here are the experts that get surveyed often on occasion names changes, but I can assure you these are all rock stars here. I've I've hired some of them to examine what we do to see if we can uh, ever do anything better. But people like Andrew Shotlin, uh, Mary Bowling, Joy Hawkins, Mike Blumenthal, uh, Phil Rossix, another person I've worked with. These people publish on local SEO. They speak in conferences and all their data was collected. And here's the survey that I'm going to review with you. Now, on this slide, all I want to really do is reference the URL. Go ahead and write that down. Um, whitespark.ca forward slash local dash search is ranking the factors. If you just did local search ranking factors, Whitespark, I'm sure it would come up right on number one. And like, I don't know what it is, 20 or 30 pages and all the data is there. So I'm giving you kind of the highlights and the important parts. And I'm also going to unpack these beautiful uh, graphics for you. All right. So the first question I want to answer is, for the local pack, now that's the, under the map, number one, and then the local finder, that's when you hit find more, and, and the big map is there with the red dots and all your competitions listed on the left. What are the major areas that contribute to ranking? That's the first question I want to answer. So here's the graphic that I mentioned. So there's four major areas. There's the Google My Business, Reviews, On-Page Stuff, and Links. Those are the four big ones. So I want to talk briefly about these four using this slide. Google My Business. Um, there's not a ton of work that an agency could do, for example, on this. Um, it's important that you understand ranking versus um, converting. And we've all seen a Google My Business listing that is somewhat filled out and doesn't have a lot of information versus a Google My Business listing that has a lot of information, a lot of photos, lots of reviews. They might have question and answer area. They might even have coupons. And typically, the one with more information is going to convert traffic better. So I'm going to cover some myths toward the end of this webinar on factors that do not help Google My Business ranking that some people think they do. Um, but some of those things help convert visitors into leads because it's more engaging. For example, we've all been on one-page websites. And you might say, well, the basic information is here. But if I have an option to view a, a competitor and they have 25 to 100 pages and it's all very interesting and it's easy to find stuff, it's super resourceful and there's images and links and it's laid out well and I can kind of meet the staff and see the job sites. That's much more trustworthy than the one page website. Same thing with social. You go to a website and they're not posting on social media. You see a post there from July of 2019 and you're wondering, are they sure on staff? Are they still in business? You know, you, you don't want your Google My Business listing to look that way for converting factors. So GMB ranking versus converting. 
All right, reviews. Later on, I'm going to unpack this a little bit more, but reviews matter. It's not only the number of reviews, but it's the quality of reviews, and it's some of the words that include that are included in the reviews. On page factors, so that's um, it's not only good quality content and good pages, but are the pages optimized around the keywords that you want? Are images optimized? So when a page loads, does it load quickly? Does it have the meta titles and the meta descriptions and the H1 and H2? And also some, there's some technical stuff in there with, um, uh, with on page as well. And then links, so not just number of links, but it's authoritative links, it's industry-related links, and it's especially local links. So those are the four big ones. I can talk uh, about some of these a little bit more. So I just covered the four uh, important factors. Now these are kind of themes for the map section, local pack, and then the local finder. All right. So how has the how has local SEO Google algorithm changed over the years? I find this interesting. I'm going to talk about one big increase and one big decrease. The big increase is Google My Business. So if you could absorb this for a second, in 2013, that's the, it's the yellow bar. So you could see over, what is it, you know, seven, eight years, Google My Business now is much more important for local ranking. Reviews, more important. Um, On-page stuff, not as important. Links, if you go all the way back to 2013, it's about the same. Behavioral and citations are, are behavioral um, and personalization is about the same, but citations are way lower. So let me unpack just two of those just so you understand the trends. And by the way, so, you know, the rise of Google My Business. I want to share a line with you that you should file in your head because I sense this is going to be the trend. I think Google would love it if no one even had a website and Google would love it if you just stayed on their platform because the longer that you stay on their platform, the more they could sell their advertising and they can make more money. So that's part of the reason why they're making your Google My Business listing so darn helpful. They didn't always have all these different features in there that they do now where you could add a, calendar link or you could do messaging or question and answer. They didn't always have all those things. You could do post and add a coupon. Well, now they're adding all those. So if it's really full, I, well, why bother going to someone's website? I have all the information here. There's going to be some, you know, a website's always going to uh, be way more informative and really kind of open um, the eyes to the, to the consumer to see who you really are. But just keep that in mind as uh, Google, you know, they, they want to dominate. So Google My Business continues to get a, to be a bigger and bigger animal. Now, the decrease that we've seen is citations. So look at 2013 versus now. Now it's only 7%. This was standard operating procedure when we had a new client. We always said, and I said it before they even came on board, we have to fix your name, address, phone number, consistency, you, like 80% of the time, it was a wreck. It was a big rat's nest. Every time someone would move, they wouldn't change their address on Google, and they'd have different phone numbers. And Google, you know, I would say they don't know you, they don't like you, they don't trust you. You have to build the trust, so you need consistency everywhere. There's some truth to that, but Google is not putting that much of an emphasis on that anymore. So we still address that early on, but we're not going to spend a month on that section or a month and a half, depending on how bad it is. Um, this is sometimes used in sales presentations today. They'll say, your citations are horrible, and then the owner doesn't know, and they're like, wow, this, I, I got to fix this. But from an emphasis standpoint, Google is putting less and less emphasis, and it could be that they're smarter. Google's smarter, and they kind of know who you are, whether you have your old phone number on a listing or your new phone number. That's not going to cause as much uh, trust with them. So those are the two big trends that we see with the local SEO. Okay, third question I want to address is what are the factors that contribute to ranking for local organic? So local organic is that third section. It's all the way at the bottom. 
here's the chart. So there's two big sections. One is on page and one is links. So again, like on page is the, the quality of content, the amount of content, and then is it optimized for the right keywords? Is there those technical SEO kind of things? Is it load quickly and all that kind of stuff? Now that's part of the reason why you see things like Home Advisor, Better Business Bureau, uh, Angie's List, some of those bigger companies that are just cranking out massive amounts of content to get listed in that area. And then, of course, with these big websites, they have a lot of links. So oftentimes it's difficult to get ranking on the first page because you're competing against those things. But Google will typically slip a couple local companies in that space along with the BBB and Home Advisor and so on. Uh, links, as I mentioned, it's it's the quality of link, it's industry-related links, and it's local links. I'll say one thing about links, and this is a conversation that I don't always get to have with clients, but if you support a local softball team or some local charity or anything, and if you can get a link from that, that's a beautiful thing. If you can even just get a mention of that on their website, even without a link, there's Google, Google credits that. I, I won't go into why, but I will just say, you know, pay attention to those things. I'm, I'm guessing many of you um, are involved in your communities and you're giving money to different areas. Try to get a link, try to get a mention. Yeah, just keep that in mind. And if, if we need to get involved and you're our client, we're happy to do that. Okay, fourth question. Which individual factors have the biggest impact on local pack one and local pack or the local finder, which is the, that second area. So this is under the map section, and this is the big map thing. Here are the top 15. Not going to go through all of them. I'm going to go through like the top half. So the first one is your primary GMB category. It's by far the most important. Um, if you're a waterproofing contractor, you should say waterproofing contractor. That is a category, and that's what it should be. The most common mistake that we see is people put a general contractor or contractor when they're really a waterproof contractor. That, that could really skew your results for your Google My Business. So super important. I'll get into the, the other categories as well. And by the way, if you have a um, if you think that Google should have a category and they don't, Google's open to expanding their categories. Um, and they've added, I mean, they add some every single month. So if there's a category that you think Google should have, uh, you can email them and they will review that. If you want to know how to do that, let me know. Okay, here's a little tool that you could put on your Chrome extension, and you could spy on your competition. It's called GMB Spy. It's free. All you do is go to uh, extensions in, in your Chrome, and you add it, you install it, and then it shows up on the top right of your screen. And what it will show you is, first of all, you have to be in the map section. So like, here's the customer's knowledge card, and then here is the, the map. So when you're on the screen, you just click the extension, and what you get is the, um, the categories. So this is gonna be the prime category. Uh, waterproofing company and then concrete contractor or contractor with whatever your setup is. So it sometimes gives you an idea if you're like, do I have the right contractors or what are these people doing? All right, the second important individual ranking factor for these two categories is keywords in the Google My Business business name. Now this is a super duper spammy example. And basically what they did is they keyword stuffed every single keyword phrase that they thought would be helpful. And, you know, here's the tension. This kind of works, all right? Does it violate Google's terms? Yes. Can they make your Google My Business page disappear if you do keyword stuffing? Yes. Will they? I don't know. Um, they'll probably give you a warning first. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. I would never position our any of our clients to uh, do this because uh, you know if they disappear off Google, they're going to be really mad at us. And we're going to lose a client, and it's this white hat. You know, it's just we just wouldn't do it. 
but I just want you to be aware that this matters. I, I had a conversation with someone yesterday and they asked, hey, I have a couple of domain names. Um, one, you know, just for an example, like ABC waterproofing, the other one I have is ABC restoration. Um, I primarily do waterproofing. Does it matter? Like, absolutely it matters. You know, uh, you want to keep that waterproofing name in your business name because it, it aligns with the keyword searches. Now, the best thing you could do is legally change your name to the most important keyword. Now you're going to be 100% legit and, you know, it's, yeah, I can't call it keyword stuffing. I'm just, I would just call it, you aligned your business name with, um, with the most important keyword in the industry and it's going to, it's going to impact your rankings. It, you know, the experts say it's number two most important. By the way, as you can tell, these are Darren's, um, Darren Shaw's slides. Um, my team is part of a uh, agency club and we got a private uh, showing of these and I'm, I'm using some of his slides, giving him full credit. So proximity to the searcher, um, that matters. Actually, a client of ours was kind to email me just before this webinar to say, hey, how much does it matter like where the searcher is versus where the office is? It matters. Um, you know, you could argue like it matters more than number three, right? Um, this kind of how the point system work, they put it in number three. Obviously, if you're on the other side of town and there's all sorts of competition, you, you know, you're not going to show up, right? But it, it it obviously matters. Like probably everyone on this webinar knows that uh, how close you are matters. And the closer you are, um, the better. I, I'm going to unpack this a little bit. Um, yeah, so most companies are going to rank number one in their hometown. Most companies will. Uh, the exception is when there's several people in that same town, like you live in a bigger town, right? I, I was on a call um, three months ago, I'd say, and it was a client who said like, hey, you know, why are we not ranked, you know, number one or very high? And they happen to be located on the outer fringe of their town and we counted I think there was 20 or 25 waterproofers in that area it, actually I think I'm, I'm getting a little bit ahead but that those kind of things matter um, all right so did you know that local ranking I'm, I'm on this path I'm just doing a, a quick divergent here local rankings are often different and at every single street corner so for example if you were to uh, do a search with your mobile phone and drive around the city, you're going to see these things move around when you're on the local finder. So these purple map dots, as you drive around, there's going to be a different ranking. So that just shows you that where you're at with the search, it truly matters. It really does. Now, here's another thing that I did just two days ago to show you how important the Google My Business listing matters. I here's a shot of Long Island. Obviously, this is the most populated, dense um, area in the United States. There's more people per square mile than anywhere else. Granted, it's surrounded by water, right? All right. So we have this cool tool that can tell us how someone ranks wherever they are. So this grid that I did here is every two miles, there's a new search that happens. So from the bottom left to the bottom right, that is, there's nine dots. It's going to be an 18 mile distance and then 18 miles up. Now, I only look for one example, honestly, and I knew it would kind of be a, a bad example, um, which I wanted to make the point. But this might be a bad example of a bad example because this is so bad. Um, this company is a basement waterproofing company and I typed in basement waterproofing in this area and they show up 19th in the local ranking, which is horrible. Now, if you did yours and you've never even hired an agency to do local SEO before, you're probably going to rank number one, two or three. It's my guess. It depends on the city that you're in. But I mean, this is bad. Like this is really bad. Now, let me show you an example of something that's way better. Same area, by the way, Long Island, New York, 
this is a neighboring basin waterproofing company in the same exact area. And you could see how different their local SEO results are. So again, same grid. These are nine dots. Every two miles, there's a new, uh, there's a new search result. So depending on where they're at, they rank differently. So obviously this company is kind of in the middle here, ranking number one. But if you look at, you know, where are they at in the top three? This is kind of a big area in the most densely populated part of the United States surrounded by water. You know, that's pretty good. Anyone would argue, man, I'll take that ranking over, you know, this one all day. You know, imagine the amount of leads that are coming in just through local search from this. Now you put a, a Google My Business listing in there with a lot of photos with good reviews with a high score, and you have a gold mine of leads coming in, and this is all free traffic. So that's why this stuff matters so much. Absolutely critical. All right. Number four factor, physical address in the city search. So I was talking about a, a client who is like not in the top three and we, you know, there's like 25 different companies. So where you're at, like where Google counts is the center of the city matters because the closer you are, especially if you're in one of those big cities that have a lot of different competitors that matter. So if you're way in the fringe, if you're like right on the border of the city, maybe you want a cheaper rent, understandably. So I want the same thing. Um, that's just going to affect your rankings. Now, does it make sense to create an office and make it legit and have Google verify it? Maybe. Um, it's a conversation for another time if you happen to be in that situation. Happy to talk to you about that. Number five, all right, additional GMB categories. So Google allows you one primary category and nine subcategories. Now, I highly recommend you use every subcategory if it relates to your business. If it doesn't relate to your business, you know, if you're not a plumber, don't put plumber. You don't want those calls. Um, you're just wasting everybody's time. So you want your most important service to be your primary category and you want any others that relate to be subcategories. As long as they relate, that's fine. You're not going to cause delusion, uh, dilution or anything like that where, oh, we have too many categories, so we're not going to rank higher. It doesn't work that way. So it's kind of one of the myths. All right, number six, quality and authority of inbound links to the domain. All right, so inbound links. Inbound links are more important than outbound links. So think of this. Like, let's say you're at a social event and a movie star walks in the room. All of a sudden, it's like, wow, like, look who's here. Those are kind of like, you know, the attention's being drawn to that movie star. Um, you could kind of compare those to like inbound links. So when Google's looking to figure out what site to rank and they see all these links pointing to the website, it's like, oh, here's somebody important. We got to rank these people higher because there's all these inbound links coming in. So that's why inbound links matter. Now, you know, in the olden days, people said like, oh, links matter and Google wasn't very smart and, you know, massive bad links were being pointed. They didn't relate to the industry, you know, you need to have industry-related links. This is how it is. And then, again, you know, local links matter. So um, pay attention to that. Number seven, keywords in native Google reviews. Okay. Here's like 201 or 301 tips. No, I'll say 301 tips on local reviews, uh, Google reviews. If you're one of our clients, we've talked to you about reviews. We've talked to you about the importance of it. We've even given you like a free tool, uh, one of ours to use. Um, and I think most of you like have really embraced reviews and created a Google culture, uh, sorry, a, a re culture of reviews, you know, where you're like incentivizing you know, staff, not, not customers, right? Um, you have contest, uh, you acknowledge it in staff meetings. There's lots of that you, you talk about it in the sales presentation, you talk about the first part of the job, you talk about payment, you're asking on the job versus, you know, sending like a, a monthly list saying like, Hey, we did work for you in the last month. Could you give us for you? No, you learn how to get results. I want to give you a tip that's even going to work better. Um, as far as creating impact with your review. If you could include the type of service that if you can get the customer to include the type of service that you did 
for example, in our industry, basement waterproofing, if you could sort of like slip in, hey, Mr. Jones or Mrs. Jones, if you could just um, type in kind of the work that we did, if you just include basement waterproofing in the review, that, that kind of helps us out. And it does help you out because, again, it's a relevant keyword, so basement waterproofing. So if you can kind of get that in the review, and if they put their city in the review, that's going to help you too. So it's not just the number of reviews, it's also the, the content of the reviews and how they relate to the service that you provide. So keep that in mind. Try to get your keywords in there. Try to get the city in there. All right. All right, number, uh, high numerical Google ratings. So all things being equal, if someone's got like a 4.8 rating and another person has a 4.2 rating, Google's going to rank the 4.8 higher because your, your numerical rating is higher. So that's, you know, that stuff matters. All that extra work that you're doing, all the, you know, the quick responses to a negative review, all, all that stuff, it really, really matters. It just affects your ranking. And, and it's these are things, it's like how you run your business and how you care about customers and the systems that you have in place to make sure that you are doing a quality job for your customers. All that stuff matters because it, it, it affects your rankings. And there's about 85 other factors, but they go down in the list, right? All right, so... What, are, what individual factors have the biggest impact on local organic rankings? So again, local organic is towards the bottom. Here's the top 15. I'm not going to go through these. I'm just going to give you a quick summary. Um, and here's my summary. The volume of quality content on the entire website. So you should be blogging and adding pages and optimizing that stuff, making the next one is keyword relevant to the entire website so that when, when Google sees consistency, they're like, okay, I know what this site is about. I'm going to rank them higher because what the person is searching for aligns very well with your website that has lots of content, lots of helpful, useful content, and it's optimized around the keyword. It's not over-optimized. You're trying to, not trying to trick Google. Google doesn't want to be tricked. But that rule, if it's good for the searcher, it's good for the search engines. Content is king. Still relate. And then the geographic keyword relevant to the domain content. So it's good to optimize some pages for the cities that you really want to rank in. All that matters. And then these other things, is it mobile-friendly, is it responsive? Is it load fast? These are important keywords. These are important things. Again, um, you know, keywords in the landing page, um, all those things matter. All right, here's our myths. Which individual factors have zero impact on rankings? You can, uh, if you hear this, you know, don't get, now you'll be educated. That's all I can say. These factors don't matter. So when you're in your Google My Business, you know, you're logged in with your Google account, there's some areas that ask for the GMB description, the services. Kind of doesn't really matter what you put. Don't worry about keyword stuffing that area. Google's not going to look at that section and say, oh, I know what these guys are about. We're going to rank them higher. It doesn't impact your rankings. Google and Google My Business now allows uh, a messenger message messaging feature. You can enable it. You can not enable it. It's not going to affect your rankings. It doesn't matter. Uh, keywords in your GMB products, that's, again, kind of logged in. It's behind the scenes. It's like when you're filling out your GMB. doesn't matter. If you spend money on AdWords, doesn't matter. It doesn't affect your, your ranking. Um, keywords in your Google posts, doesn't matter. I'm going to skip down a couple frequency of Google posts. I'll admit, for about a two-week period, I believe that if we posted a lot on someone's Google My Business page, it would help with rankings. It does not help with rankings. It only helps with engagement and people spending more time on it and thus a more willingness to convert that web visitor into a lead. Um, going up presence of an appointment URL or a calendar link, it's not going to affect it. Um, the quality of Google Post doesn't affect your rankings. And then citations. We talked about that earlier. You know, Google has it down to 7%. It 
if you had a perfect, uh, which I've never seen before ever, if you have a perfect um, citation directory listing profile on the internet, it won't affect your rankings for, for this section. All right. So winding things down here, big conclusion is there is massive, massive amounts of web traffic and leads coming in through local SEO. I get, I get the most amount of calls for like, Hey, what should I do to grow my business? Like what's the next lead source that I should do? And I kind of really enjoy that. And I, I really try to customize it based on the customer's profile, what the competition is doing, what strengths they have, what strengths they don't have and so on. And I try to, you know, take their budget and say, okay, great, next step is this. But, boy, you know, you can't overlook local SEO um, in, in how you run your business. And there's some things that you could do that could just influence this. And it really matters that this is by far the biggest, um, the biggest area of lead sources, of a lead source for probably any uh, contractor. So what can you do to get more leads? You know, there's that tension between, well, you know, I, I'm paying an agency to do it or I could do it myself. I, I've never really seen a contractor try to do it themselves. When they do, they typically reach a point and they're big enough to say, like, I'm wearing 25 hats. I'd rather just wear 24. I'm going to figure out an agency that I can trust. But some of you like to dabble with this stuff. And some of you have someone on staff that could do this stuff. Like, for example, complete your GMB listing. All right, and then add lots of photos. Like you could add photos on a regular basis, and I'd recommend it. And again, you know, if it, you gotta figure out a way, you gotta be great at, at Google reviews. I hope if there's one thing that you got out of this, like figure out how to get reviews and figure out how to get good reviews. All right, so there are some things that you can do. You don't have to just hire an agency for all this stuff. Um, create a culture of reviews and use those important keywords. All right, regularly add good quality optimized content to your website. A website is an, it's a thing that you continue to build on. It's not a one and done where, okay, every three to five years we'll get a new website. It's just not like that. You want to be adding little things here, little things there, content, awards, update little things. Fourth is obtain authoritative, relevant incoming links. And especially if there's any way to get local links or local mentions, get those. They help your rankings. And then, you know, we said there's 85 other little things. There's just like lots of little things. The industry's always changing. Technology's changing. Google changes their algorithms to kind of try to pay attention to those, um, those little things. But, you know, focus on the big things. So that is what we, that, man, that's huge. There's just so much free traffic coming in. Um, I hope that this year you really are able to take advantage of local SEO and you could really, you know, dominate, try to dominate your area and then try to get the visitors that are coming to your website to, to convert. If you want to talk about any of this, you want to talk about your, your Google My Business listing, if you want a free strategy session, for free we do massive amounts of research because we pay a fortune on tools that give us this information super fast and we're able to analyze it and present it in a way that you can see kind of what you're doing and what you're up against, what your challenges are, what your opportunities are. Happy to help. We're here to help people win and we want you guys to win. Call us. Let us know if you have questions. We want to help and that's what we have today. Wishing you a great year. Let us know if we can help. I might be able to take any questions if you want to throw out some questions. Oh, can you use a fake Google My Business? Um, it's got to be verified from Google. And it, so Google is kind of being a stickler about Google My Business locations. Um, they have had us set up a time with someone in, in India that works for Google that's been that they the, our contractor client has to have a camera on and they have to approach the building and this has to be the company sign on the door and they have to go in and they have to be able to see staff and see other signs and the Google employee will sometimes say you know what we think you're playing games and uh, we want you to verify that um, when once you kind of 
get into the Google thinking you have fake locations, it gets tricky. It, like what they'll do, they'll take them down. And then it takes a lot of work to get Google to verify it. Um, you know, a lot of times it's worth it just to pay. And sometimes you could pay, um, you know, 100 or $200 a, a month to some location to try to get it to be a legit office. And Google's going to want to send a postcard to that address, um, and they might want to see it. They are, they are doing a lot of that. Um, yeah, I'm, John's typing in here. We have had success with, with uh, some companies doing that. So I'm, I'm not saying, you know, no, don't do that. Um, I would just recommend do it legitimately. Um, so anyway, I appreciate the question. Salespeople's houses, um, that's a tricky one. You know, uh, is it going to have a sign on the door? You know, is it going to, are you going to be able to go with the camera? Can, can a customer go there and, and do, can you, Google wants customers to be able to go to your office and do business there. So, you know, I don't know. Do you want to be kind of like a little mark on your name, like, okay, this company plays games? That That's that's this the flag. Uh, what? In some cases, this applies. You have old listings that kind of got grandfathered in, uh, and they're verified. Like, I would run with those. I would get reviews to those. I'd add photos. I would do, like, amazing things. If you are thinking, man, I'm just located in a bad location. I can't rank. I mean, I'm just I'm 20 miles away from where I really want to be, but I have low rent. I would look into setting up a legit office. It's worth, you know, just do some hard work and see if there's a way that you could find a super cheap rent and make it like a super small office. Um, it's worth looking into. Um, yeah, how important are Google My Business postings? They will not affect your ranking. You could do a posting every single day and it will not affect your ranking. Um, it will make your Google My Business listing more engaging and it's just like a website do you want like a one-page website uh or do you want like a 25 to 100 page website where there's a lot of content and it's interesting and it's engaging and people feel like this is a legit business and they're not going to go out of business next year because this is their web presence it's, it's like social media you know do you do one post a month or do you post regularly and and comment on all your reviews and so on um Great questions. I appreciate your questions. Anything else out there that I can help with? Those are good questions. Let me see. Oh, uh, Google services. Uh, sometimes I don't think they've really broken into our waterproofing space just yet. I think they have for some pumps. They, Google kind of likes that lower um, I was looking into this a month or two ago, and I've kind of been keeping an eye on them to see if they're going to break into our space. I think they are on, like, lower-level services. Um, if you can upsell those, get your foot in the door, like, more power to you. We don't run ads for the phrase sump pump. Um, you know, in our experience, we're usually, you know, you're competing against, like, Home Depot or Lowe's, Menards kind of shopper. Uh, but... Some people have, you know, figured that out and they do lots of them, like the Sump Pump Geek or whatever, you know, more power to you. That Typically, that's not our model for our contractors. Um, yeah, so I'm not sure. There's a question about ads appearing in Google My Business. Um, I think that's a I mean, if you're talking about, you know, they used to call it a uh, seven pack, right? Like several years ago under the map, there used to be seven pack and then Google's trying to make more money. And so then they squeezed that area and they pushed people into Google ads. And then there was a three pack. And then Google said, hey, well, what if we slip an ad on the top there and kind of make it a four pack? And if you can get that spot, uh, we love that spot. That creates a lot of leads to put that ad on the Google listing, which we're calling the local pack. It's a beautiful spot to have an ad. That's a great question. That's an advanced uh, question. Um, all right. That's all I'm going to run with at the moment. And last call for any questions. I do appreciate your questions. They're great questions. 